The Stolen Book. Way back in the 30s, during the Depression days, Mr. Ronald Reed took a temporary job as a night watchman in a lumber yard. Yeah, this job isn't too bad. Surely better than none. I've been here for over a week already, and nothing's happened yet. I guess people aren't as bad as they're painted to be. I don't see. Thought I heard something. Uh, I guess I didn't. My nerves are just taut, is all. I'll just go out of it. There it was again. Sounded like it came from the from the office. I'd better go and see what's up. A few more seconds and I'll have this safe open. <laughs> There must be at least 10,000 in there. Enough to last me for a long time. This place is a pushover. Hold it! Don't move! Turn that drill off! Now reach and quick about it, Tave. Uh, You're uh, under arrest. Don't move. Not a muscle. You're under arrest. Well, well what are you going to do with me? Just don't move. You'll see. Operator? Give me police. Emergency. Hey, look, fella, let's you and me make a deal. Police, this is Ronald Reed, night watchman at the Elms Lumber Company. I just caught a burglar trying to open the safe. Yes. Okay. Hey, look, Mr. Reed, I'm a three-time loser. This time they'll throw the book at me. Maybe 15, 20 years. You won't want me to spend the rest of my life in the who's God, do you? I'm merely doing my job. But think of my kids. They'll be fatherless for 20, 30 years. Come on, now, let's make a deal. There's maybe 10,000 in this safe. You can have half. You won't make a deal. I'm turning you over to the police when they arrive. Yeah. Now, listen, you. Either you make a deal or you'll be sorry. I'll get even with you if it takes 50 years. Hmm. Where you're going, you won't have a chance to get even with anybody. Yeah. But someday I'll get out, copper. And then it'll be your life or mine. Twenty-five years are now over. Ronald Reed has two children and a charming wife. Uh, Ronald? Yes, dear? I want to talk to you. Well, all right. What about? Did I track some mud in the house or something? This is serious. Well, of course it is. Well, I'm listening. A special delivery letter came today. Hmm? From the warden of the state penitentiary. From the warden of the state pen? Here, read it. Mr. Reed, I feel it my duty to inform you that Lefty Carmichael, released this morning, plans to harm you for your part in his imprisonment. I usually ignore such threats, but somehow I believe Lefty means to actually get revenge. My advice is for you to get all the protection necessary for your safety. Oh, you will get police protection. Of course not. What are you going to do? Nothing. Except get out and polish my two pistols and hunting rifle. Oh, those guns. I think they're about as dangerous as Lefty Carmichael. Nonsense. Guns aren't dangerous. If one knows how to handle them. Oh. Well, let's pray. And ask God's protection. Now, dear, you know very well how I feel about prayer and religion. My guns are more... Uh, more material and real than prayer. I'll put my trust in my guns, thank you. The next evening, the Reed family went visiting friends. That left their home empty and silent. Outside, in the dark shadows of the shrubbery, a tall, ominous figure crept along. He came silently to the window outside the Reed living room. Uh, uh, this is where he lives, all right. <laughs> oh, and he's away from home. I'll sneak in this window and wait for him. Me and this gun. Uh, uh, the window isn't locked. Now to crawl through. Uh, 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 
Better close it again. Now, for a safe hiding place. And wait for that copper to come home. the woman and the two kids. Know where he is. Mom, why did Daddy have to go to the office? He didn't say. But he'll be home real soon. I hope that wicked old lefty doesn't get Daddy. Why, Jimmy, you know very well that no human is really wicked and bad. Jesus never called anyone those terrible things. And he said kind words to everyone. So should we. Oh, lefty Carmichael is a bad man. So there. So I'm bad, am I? Uh, uh, listen, Jimmy... And you too, Jesse. Come over here and sit in the Davenport. I want to talk to you. Okay. All right, Mom. They're coming here to the sofa. Now, Jimmy, your sister is right. No person is really bad, all bad. Jesus told us to love our enemies and do good to those who hate us and pray for those who despitefully use us. Are we really supposed to love that thief, Lefty, that's going to get even with Daddy? Yes, Jimmy. But he might hurt Daddy. And us, too. As long as we love our enemies, we have nothing to fear. Jesus will take care of us. Aren't you afraid of anything, Mom? No, Jimmy. Not even of that lefty Carmichael? Jesus will protect us from all danger. Daddy said his guns protect him. Jesus is more protection than all the guns in the world. Will Jesus protect Daddy, even if he doesn't trust Jesus? Your father will someday find out how useless his guns really are against enemies. Anyway, I hope Lefty doesn't come here. We all hope that, Jimmy. Well, if he does, will he shoot Daddy, or will Daddy shoot him first? Neither, I'm sure, Jimmy. Anyway, it's time your children are in bed. But Jimmy, you run and get the Bible. We'll read, then pray. Jesus, protect him. <laughs> Not from me. Not will protect that copper from me. <laughs> Here's the Bible, Mom. I'll read a little from uh, uh, the 18th chapter of Luke. Ah. You've heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Well, it's late, so we'll have just one prayer. Jesse, you. Okay, ma'am. Let's close our eyes. Dear Jesus, I thank thee for such a good mother and daddy and brother. Help daddy to like and trust in you like we do. Forgive him if he doesn't, because he doesn't know you like I do. And neither does that man Lefty know you. Please help him to be better, and not to hurt Daddy or us, because he really is a good man. And I love him like you love him. Well, good night, dear Jesus. Amen. All right, children. Off to bed with you. Okay. Come We're on. coming, Mom. Yes. I never heard of anyone loving their enemies like they do. I wonder if that that little girl really means that she loves me. She's sweet, she is. I wish I had a a sweet little girl like her. A little boy, too. Moments later, Daddy came home. Well, the gun's down from the rack. I'll just sit here and check him up a bit. I don't believe that Lefty Carmichael will try to get revenge on me, but I've got to be prepared, just in case.
Finally, after thoroughly cleaning the guns, Daddy got up, closed and locked all the doors and windows, and then went upstairs to bed. Lefty, alone now, crawled from his hiding place. Yeah. He's the cop who sent me to jail, all right. How a rat like him could have such a nice daughter's beyond me. Oh, she's a sweet one, she is. And she prayed for me. Ain't no one ever prayed for me before. She loves me, too. Me, old Lefty Carmichael. Think of it. She loves me. And she prayed for me not to hurt her. Hurt her? Me? Uh, I wouldn't harm her in a million years. And I... I guess hurting a daddy would be hurting her, so... I won't do it. Oh, you don't know how lucky he is. I wonder, this book, this Bible that she read from... I sure would like to have it. I guess they wouldn't mind if I just sat here for a spell and leave through. Ronald! Ronald! Wake up! Uh, uh, what's the matter? Wake up! Lefty Carmichael was here last night. L Lefty Carmichael? Here? Yes. He was right here in this house, hiding behind the Davenport in the front room. How do you know all of this? He left a note for you. Here, let me see that note. Mr. Copper, I was hiding behind the sofa when your wife and kiddies came home. I sneaked in to kill you, but I couldn't. And it's because of your little girl and her Jesus. Yes, that's right, Copper. And you're more of a rat than I, than I thought not to love her and her Jesus more than you do. I'm sneaking out the way I sneaked in, and I'm sparing your life for her sake. I'm taking only one thing, the Bible your missus read from. I'm going to read it and try to learn to love my enemies like your little girl does. Lefty Carmichael. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Well, why don't you talk to Jessie? It, is she up yet? Well, neither of the children are. I think I will talk to her. Jesse? Yes, Daddy. Good morning, Daddy. Uh, good morning. Lefty Carmichael didn't get you last night, did he? Uh, that's what I want to talk to you about, Jesse. What about him, Daddy? Lefty Carmichael sneaked in here last night while we were away. And he, well, he was hiding behind the Davenport when you and Jimmy and Mother came home. He was hiding there all the time? Evidently, he was. Anyway, he heard you pray for him, and it... It touched his heart, and he... Well, he didn't harm me when I came home. Oh, I think he's a nice man. Honey, I, I'm beginning to see that love is the greatest force in the world. I guess that's why they say that God is love. Jesus is love, Daddy. He loves everyone. So I'm beginning to understand. Oh, Daddy, will you go to church with Jimmy and Mommy and me? So you can learn all about Jesus and his love? I guess that's the very least I could do. Oh, Daddy, I love you. Daddy kept his word. He went to church and in time became a devout Christian. He bought a new Bible to replace the one taken by Lefty Carmichael. And the whole Reed family read it faithfully. It seemed that the episode with Lefty Carmichael was at an end, but it actually wasn't. The Reed family and Lefty Carmichael were destined to come in contact once again with each other. But how, when, and where? Jimmy, Jesse, Mother, all of you, come here, gather around. Oh, want, Daddy? Here I oh, am. I have some news for my family. Mighty important news. Oh, what is it, well, Father? Well, tell us, Daddy. Oh, we're right. going on a vacation. Oh, they we are. are. Yes, when? We're, we're going to a lake in the North Woods. Oh, oh, oh when, Daddy? And we're like going that. to leave next Monday morning. Oh, oh really, Daddy? Now, right. just, a minute, just a minute, just a minute. We have lots to do to get ready, so everyone will have to get busy and help. Oh, all right, you, Daddy. Start right okay. now. All right, the car 
cars loaded. We're all here. So here we go on our vacation. 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 Well, family, there she is. The cabin in which we're going to spend the next two weeks. Look at the lake. It's a whopper. This is going to be fun. I'm going to explore. I'm going swimming. And boating. We're going to do lots of things. This is a rather run-down place, isn't it? Doesn't look like anyone's lived here for centuries. I thought it'd be fun to... Well, to sort of rough it. It will be fun, Ronald. Well, family... What do we do today? Let's go exploring. All in favor of exploring, say aye. Aye. Ah, looks like you lose, Jimmy. Any other suggestions? Let's go on a picnic over on that island. Good idea. And I can explore the island. All in favor of going to the island on a picnic, say aye. 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 Motion carried. We go to the island in uh, 15 minutes, if Mother can have the lunch ready by that time. I can have it ready in uh, 14 and a half minutes. <laughs> the boat leaves <laughs> from the reed pier in exactly 15 minutes. <laughs> Sit down, everyone, and hang on. Here we go for the island. Oh, it's too cool. Look at the bay. All out and on the beach for the reed picnic. And it's water? Can't you find a pier to land oh, on? Oh, water won't hurt you. Out, everyone, out. Hey, Jesse, look, there's a diving board. Yes, sir. It is, isn't it? Let's go swimming. Okay, let's. Not so fast there, you children. We'll all go swimming after we find a picnic spot. That looks like a good spot over there. Let's go see if it is. That was a delicious lunch, Mother. Daddy, can I go to the other side of the island exploring? I'll go with you. Me too. How about you, Mother? Not me. I'll stay here, thank you, and rest. We'll be back in an hour or so, Mother. Oh, this is a beautiful spot. Such a clear and pretty brook. There's fish in it, too. Big ones. See them? And look on the other side. Those pretty flowers. May I go and pick some of them, Daddy? Oh, we'll all go. Here, I'll go first and show you kids how to cross a creek on stones. When I was a boy, we used to live near a big creek that... Oh! Daddy, are you hurt? You're all wet. Oh, I must have sprained my ankle. It hurt terribly. I'll run and get mother. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. You children can help me. I'll use you as crutches. We'll get back to where your mother is without unduly exciting her. Oh. Mother, mother, here we are. It's about time you're back. I was beginning to get a little worried that you were... Oh, what's the matter with you, Ronald? Oh, nothing, I... Nothing? I just... Look at your ankles, swollen as big as your knee. He fell down in the water, Mom. We were trying to get across a little creek. And he slipped on some stones and broke his ankle. No, no, it isn't broken. Just sprained, probably. Anyway, we've got to get you to the mainland and a doctor immediately. <laughs> Jimmy, you run ahead and get the boat ready. Okay, Mom. Jesse, you help me with your father. We've got to get him to the boat right away. boat's gone. Somebody must have stolen it. Are you sure? Yeah, I looked everywhere. Boy, it must be there somewhere. It's got to be. Let's hope it is. Uh, Jimmy, you help me too. We've got to get to the beach and find that boat in a hurry. All right. There it is. 
Out there, floating. We must not have tied it securely. I'll swim out and get it. Oh, no, it's too far to swim, Jimmy. But we've got to get you to a doctor on the mainland. I'll send up a smoke distress signal. It's sprinkling. We were so busy thinking about Daddy that we didn't notice a storm coming up. And it looks like a bad storm, too. It's raining. Quick, under that tree. No, no, no. A tree's the worst place to be in an electric storm. That sounded mighty close. We might as well stay right here in the open. Why not make a tent from this blanket? Yeah, good idea. It won't be much of a tent, but it'll surely be better than nothing. It doesn't look like the storm will ever end. I'm as wet as can be. We all are. This blanket doesn't shed water very well. I believe the storm's letting up a little. Let's hope so. The blanket's Hello in there. there. Someone's out there. Yeah. Uh, we're under the blanket. Not a very good tent, I'd say. Well, so would I. I wonder who he is. If you'll come out of that tent, I'd like to help you. But it's still raining. Oh, no, it isn't. What you hear on the blanket are drops from the trees. Oh. Well. Yeah. Say, it isn't raining. My name's Carter. I'm a neighbor of yours over on the mainland. Oh, yes. I meant to drop around and get acquainted with you, Mr. Carter. I'm Reed, and this is my wife and family. We came over to the island for a picnic. And Daddy fell and hurt his ankle. And we lost our boat. And now we're all wet with the rain. That about sums up the situation, all right. I saw you come over in the morning. Then later I saw your boat adrift, so I retrieved it and brought it back to you. Thanks, Mr. Carter. Yeah, my ankle needs medical attention, so... Well, if you'll excuse us, we'd better get going. Well, come with me in my motorboat. I'll have your doctor in no time. Are we going to leave our boat here? No, son. We'll tie it behind the motorboat. Comfortable, Mr. Reed? Yes, Mr. Carter. Say, you're certainly a real neighbor. <laughs> I try to be. Thanks to your little girl. Thanks to my little girl? Yes, Mr. Reed. I, uh, I told you my name's Carter, and so it is, but it didn't used to be. I changed it from Carmichael, Lefty Carmichael. Lefty Carmichael? You? Well, I didn't recognize you. Say, you, you've changed. Yes, I have changed, in more ways than one. A book changed me, a stolen book. And your little girl's prayer, the prayer she offered the night I was hidden back of your sofa. Did my prayer really change, Mr. Lefty? Your prayer made me want to be exactly like you. And the book showed me how to be. I suppose by the book you mean the Bible? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bible I stole from your living room that night. See, imagine stealing a book that itself teaches not to steal. Let's say that that book is a gift from us to you, huh? I do want to keep it. Now, that particular Bible, it means so much to me. But I'd like to pay for it or replace it. We wouldn't think of it. Your changed life is pay enough. And twice now you've saved my life. I didn't, Mr. Reed. It was your little girl. She and her prayer and the Bible. Do you love everyone now, Mr. Lefty? I surely do. And please, call me Uncle Lefty, will you? Okay, Uncle Lefty. Do you, uh, do you love Daddy, too? It's a funny thing about love. That book says to love our enemies. Well, I've tried to do just that. But I find that I... Well, that I can't. I mean, once I start loving people, I find that no longer do I have enemies. Everyone's my friend. May I call you Uncle Lefty, too? Well, please do, Jimmy. Uh, may I guide the boat, Uncle Lefty? She's all yours, Captain. A little child shall lead them.